Hey, my name is Mike, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to farm this mount that I'm on, the Iron Hoof Destroyer, which drops off the final boss in Blackrock Foundry on Mythic only, Blackhand. You can find this raid in Gorgrund and Draenor, so make sure that when you enter the raid, before you enter the raid, it's set to Mythic, and afterwards you check chat to double check to make sure it is Mythic. This mount has a low percent chance to drop, I'm not entirely sure of the percentage, but it's a rare mount, so it's probably very low. So in Blackrock Foundry, you can take three different ways. Uh, the method that I'm showing you in this video, I think is the most efficient. So what you're gonna do is you can skip all these ads and you can just take a right into the little tunnel that leads you to the first set of bosses. So while I'm going to the first boss, I'm gonna go over a couple of frequently asked questions really quick. So in this video, it was recorded on Thursday, October 4th, 2018 in patch 8.0.1, which was the BFA pre-patch. In this video, I am a level 120 warrior with an item level of 370. The earliest that I could do this was level 110 actually, so this is easily soloable as of BFA. In this video, the map will be staying open for the entirety of the run, just so anyone who hasn't been here before has a better sense of direction. The video is slightly sped up. The raw footage came out to about a 25 minute run, so this will take you about a half hour. And if you're interested in my, in my add-ons, I've left the list of them in the description box. With that out of the way, we can now go into the first boss, which we're almost at. So as you can see, I'm skipping most of the trash. Unfortunately, some of the guys near the front there, I do end up pulling on my way back towards the next boss. But for Gruul, you can pull him with this trash beforehand. They're not that bad. Gruul does this thing, I think it's called Infernal Slice, which just adds like a stacking dot to you, I think, or makes you take more damage. And he also spawns orange balls around the room that you're going to see here in a moment. You just can avoid those. At level 120, honestly, none of this stuff really does that much damage, and whether or not you pop your cooldowns is up to you. I usually do on the bosses just to kill them quicker, but you don't need to do those. You don't need to pop them to, to kill the boss at all. So moving into the now the, the next boss, Orgorger, there's a little bit of trash on the way that, that you probably won't see if you're, if you're going through here quickly, but you'll see on the way back. So again in this video what i'm going to do is i'm going to not pull them and then pull them on my way back unfortunately but the higher level you go obviously the, the quicker the more ads rather you'll be able to to avoid but yeah this is a, this is a raid that i actually uh raided quite a bit of back in Draenor. this was the first raid that well, this was the raid that i left my old guild for for the guild that i'm currently in and this was when i, I realized that like what a, a properly run guild looks like before I was me and my friends were kind of in a guild together and, and it was just chaos and and seeing what my current guild was run like was really cool to see and, and being able to kill flamebender without actually wiping once was was a really interesting experience so more anecdotes a little later on our way to other bosses but when you get to the orgorge room pull all of the ads in this room because you have to kill them to spawn the boss when the boss spawns you can attack him but he doesn't take any damage for a couple seconds but once he is attackable, what he's going to do, if you even see any uh, mechanics, he's going to spawn this puddle underneath you, which you're going to see in this video, um, but he also spawns uh, like a crystal that you can see right there beside that puddle, just for a brief moment. What that does is after a while, it's going to explode and then stun you, so if, if, this, if this boss takes a little bit of time for you to kill, make sure to not stand near that crystal, because again, it will stun you. Moving now onto the next boss, you're going to see, like I mentioned earlier, pulling some of this trash by accident, just an AoE fest, not that big of a deal. So again, moving back into the, uh, I feel like I've said the same thing over and over again, moving back into, or so, a lot, so I apologize if that's getting annoying, but moving back into the the, the, like the stories, I guess, of Blackrock Foundry, I remember Mythic Orgorger, for some reason, took a long, long time to kill. I forget the mechanics, but I think... You, you had to stand in specific places to collect something or you couldn't I don't I remember I remember we had to stand like we split the raid up to stand in specific places for something and, and that boss took for it took us a while to kill actually which was really annoying and then this next boss blast furnace was one that on heroic even we were it, it was like it was it was a killer like in a pug good luck even as a guild this was one of the hardest bosses I thought and I'm pretty sure most guilds had an issue with this with this fight. It was, it was actually pretty difficult. I think there was a lot of damage output going on, which was brutal. What you have to do in this fight is you're going to pull this guy in the middle. I forget his name, but he has a couple of ads beside him. When you kill them, the, like, the fight kind of officially starts. You're going to see there's two engineers here. If you can keep those live, because you see those two bombs there that just fell on the ground that I'm clicking, you can actually use those to make this fight go a little bit quicker, because what you're going to do 
is the engineers will put a bomb on you and you get an extra action button. But also when they die, they drop those uh, bags of bombs. And you, and you need those to, to push the boss into the next phase. So what's going to happen is you see I'm going to clear one side of ads and then I'm going to go stand on one side of this furnace. Make sure you only stand on one side. And this fight is cut because it was like two and a half minutes of me just standing here waiting for this stuff to spawn. So you're going to see a security guard spawns, an engineer spawns, and a bellow responds. That big guy, don't worry about him. The security guard killed relatively quickly because he puts like a purple shield on the ground. And then when the engineer dies, loot three of the bombs from the sack that, he's, that he drops. You can, you can loot up to three. And ideally, you should be killing them right on this door thing that I'm killing them on. And then you're going to use the extra action button, extra action button on that door. Because what that's going to do, and I forget how many bombs you need, but what that's going to do is that's going to damage the door. And then finally, when you, on both sides, there's a door. So that's why you want to stand on one side. You want to focus one at a time, and then you want to get that door down. Once you get that one door down, go to the other side. And the reason we're going to stay on one side is because the engineers also do something called repair. And they'll repair the, the, the door. So if you keep swapping back and forth which door you're on, you're going to be in this fight forever. So don't worry about it. Just kill the engineers on there, on the door, pick up the bombs, and then blow up the doors. When the boss pushes, you have these slag elementals that spawn. And you're going to see these guys, four guys are on the boss here. They're supposed to be immune to damage. And I was trying to kill this guy, showing you that they are immune, but they were actually taking damage. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I'm not sure if that's intended or not, but you see that slag elemental? What was supposed to happen is you're supposed to make that, like, interrupt that guy so he stands on top of these guys that are supposed to be immune. Bring that slag elemental down to, like, 1 HP, and he's going to explode, removing the immunity from these guys, and then you kill all four of them. It usually takes a lot longer, but again, I don't know why they weren't immune, if that's supposed to happen or not, but that's what you're supposed to do, or you had to do before. Once all four of those guys have broken their immunities and you've killed them, the boss will become active and you kill him. It's, it's a relatively simple fight. It's actually pretty tedious and annoying at max level just because you're, you're spending a lot of time waiting. The one thing I do want to stress again is don't, don't go back and forth on doors. Kill one door at a time. Because I did that once where I, I, I got like the one door to half health and the other to half health. And then the, the, the one engineer spawned on the other side of the room and he started repairing. By the time I got over there, the door was completely healed and then I stayed on that side and the other side ended up getting healed the full and it's just, you're constantly having to do that so don't worry about any of the the bellowers that spawn on the other side don't worry about them they they will just stand there don't worry about anything you can stay on one side and when the boss becomes active all the ads that are there they're going to come to you even the bellowers they're going to become targetable they're going to come mobile and come to you so once you kill the blast furnace you're going to make your way back up the way you came towards the entrance of of the raid and what you're going to do is out of this tunnel, you're going to take a right. You could go straight, but I prefer going right just because I think, again, like I said, I think it's a more efficient and better route to take. You can avoid all the ads in this area if you do pull them. Really not that big of a deal at this point. They don't do that much damage. The next boss you're going to is Beast Lord Darmak. At max level... It's, it's kind of funny the way he works, because what, what, what used to happen is you would attack him every, I think, 20%. He would jump to one of the four animals in this room. But since you kill him so quickly, what's going to happen is, at most, he'll jump to two. But what's going to happen is, in, in this video, I, I get him to one, one HP. He's going to jump on the elephant, so he always jumps to the closest animal to him. And this guy, the fault line, I believe his name is, is going to spawn on Mythic. And you have to kill this guy and then kill the boss. So the boss jumps on an animal, you kill that animal, and the boss, boss jumps off, and then you kill the boss. So what used to happen is that every 20% he would jump to a new animal, you kill that animal, the boss jumps out again, you, kill him 20, you get him down 20% more, kill the next animal. I think at 20%, when the boss was at 20%, Fault Line would spawn, and the boss would get on the final animal. I believe that's the way it worked, but now, as you saw, the boss gets on... If, if, if you're slow at DPS, at, on two animals max, and then you just kill him really quickly. So moving into Operator uh, Thogar, what's going to happen is there is a couple of trash packs around, I guess before you get to the boss, and they're on these little elevated platforms here. And there's going to be trains that spawn, that's, trains that come by that spawn the ads. So the first train of ads spawns a bunch of these ads, as you're seeing here. Unfortunately, they kind of stand still and, and, and cast at long range. So melee, you're kind of boned, and that you have to go over there and kill them. Uh, the second train will come in like 10 seconds afterwards, and there's a cannon on this one that I don't think melee can hit, so you need some sort of ranged ability as a melee. Ranged obviously won't have an issue, and there's a couple of ads that also spawn with these guys. I think these guys will spawn like bombs on the ground that you used to want to avoid, but now, again, they don't do that much damage. So once you kill these guys, you can 
then make your way towards the, I guess, the boss room. And Operator Thogar, there might be some RP, be RP beforehand, and he might take a bit to spawn, but he, he'll eventually jump down into this room, and then you can kill him, obviously. So the way this fight works, um, and you don't really see too much of the mechanics in this video, is that there are four doors that you're going to see me looking at here, and throughout the fight, they'll be opening. And on Mythic, eventually, like, three or four doors spawn, open up at the exact same time, and a train comes through there. And the train... I don't know if it will kill you now, but what it used to do, it was like if it touched you, you were dead. And it'll spawn ads and stuff, so if you see a door open and you're standing on that train track, just don't be on that train track. But you should kill him quickly enough that either you don't have to worry about having to like micromanage which train track you're on, or you won't have to worry about it at all. Once you kill him, you're going to make your way back the way you came and then jump down this little thing here into the water. And you'll land in the water so you don't have to worry about taking fall damage. There's going to be some technicians here, I think four in total. Make sure to kill those, because I don't think the boss spawns if you don't kill them. The one time I did this, I killed all this trash, the boss didn't spawn, and killed the technicians, and then, and then the boss spawned. So make sure to definitely kill those technicians. Kill all the trash around this area, there's like 30 seconds of RP, and then the Iron Maidens will spawn. I believe on Mythic they do not share a health pool, but what you want to do is you want to AoE them down relatively around the same time. You don't have to, it's just the old mechanic in me is just kind of coming out. So... When one of them reaches 20% health, they all gain this new ability. The one that you just saw jump away that I'm attacking right now will drop a turret that used to be the most annoying thing and would kill half the raid. And then I forget what the other ones do. One of them like teleports around like you just saw, I think. And Yeah, I don't remember all the mechanics that happened there, but if you can, you want to kill them around the same, around the same time so that way you have to deal with the extra mechanics as little as possible but again it's not mandatory you can just single target one at a time it'd be like you'll be totally fine if you do that so once you do that you're going to go down this path and what you're going to notice is that you're going to be getting a, a stacking speed buff i think it's 30 percent per stack that refreshes every like three or four or five seconds something like that and you're going to make your way towards the elevator thing here now what you want to do if you, if you notice i'm not going up on the map and towards that boss at the top there on the top left uh, if you go that way, it will be locked off, so don't even bother going over there because you won't be able to get to it. Where I'm going now is to the next boss, um, Hans and Franz, Hans, Gar and Franzak, the official name. When you walk into here, there's some RP and then there's these plates that come down, kill the ads, and the boss will come out. So basically, if, if you'll kind of see it in this video, the whole room is a conveyor belt, like different conveyor belts. And you're going to see me moving here in a second, and I stand in between the conveyor belt so that in between like the, 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 the piece in the middle there, as you see, I'm standing on it, I'm not moving. The conveyor belts are moving and they will push you, but I'm not moving so because I'm standing in the middle. If this takes you enough time, the, there will be like plates, hot plates that come out of the walls that you want to avoid. There will also be like those stamper things that come down and, and, uh, and crush you. And I don't know if they would kill you at 120. I've never seen them at 120, but they might, so just avoid them. You'll notice them because the, the ground will like light up and slowly get... I don't know if it's immediately orange or if it slowly gets more and more orange or yellow, whatever, until it, the, the stamper drops. But if the ground underneath you is lighting up, move out of that. Moving into the next boss now, one of the final ones, what you're going to do is just avoid all this trash. You can jump on these boxes to, and, and hop on these conveyor belts to get to the Flamebender. <laughs> one of the most. I was just talking about this fight with my brother the other day, too. This was, easy, this was a guild breaker for my first guild, and this was when I came, I had like PTSD. When I came in this fight, I don't know, I was almost anxious. It's like, oh my god, are we going to wipe and we one-shot it? I was like, oh my god, this, this guild can one-shot flame better. Oh my god. I don't really remember what was happening with the old guild, but basically there's going to be lines like those that orange line there you want to not stand in. There's going to be a weapon behind the boss you see kind of whirlwinding. Avoid that. Mechanics that I'm saying in this video, they won't kill you at 120. They're just mechanics that if you were curious, or maybe you're running this at a lower level and you and you need some help. Just some stuff to look out for. Also on Flamebender, there's a guy that starts the fight with her called Aknor or something like that. He's an elite ad that you can just kill really quickly. He, he doesn't really do much in the fight except I think jump to random people. And if you're soloing this, he'll jump to you. I don't know if he stuns you or if he just fixates you. I don't remember, but he's not a big deal. The next boss is uh, Chromog. Uh, I kill him so quick that you don't see any of the mechanics, but what sometimes would happen is that there he does a stone breath that you'll see, but he also would put like red um, runes on the ground, I guess. And if you remember when you were on your way to Gruul, those runes on the ground that I was avoiding, they, they kind of look like that. Don't stand in those. 
I think there'll be one in the middle and then two hands on either side, and those hands eventually come together to clap. And then they used to, I think, kill the people inside the hands. And then at one point, if you get to this point, I mean, you're, you're really kind of slow, but with the DPS and maybe you're not geared enough yet to do this, but at one point there's like a whole bunch of, I think, yellow runes that spawn. You want to stand in one to like get grasped by a hand, and that you got to break it at a certain point. I forget. But you're going to go into this tunnel now the same way you went after Iron Maidens, but now you're going to make your way back to the elevator. Uh, again, that speed boost is really helpful here. And when you get to the elevator, wait for the come down, hop onto the elevator. It's going to take you up and it's going to take you back to the start of the end, start, or start of the raid, sorry. You'll notice it because basically um, on the right here, you're going to notice the, the raid entrance and the way we can't like gruel straight ahead and whatnot. What you're going to do now is you're going to go take a left here and you're going to go straight across the bridge, which is now open. This is going to lead you to the final boss. You're going to notice an ad at the end of this hallway. And in this video, I didn't actually know you needed to kill this ad. It's been a while since I've run BRF. So you're going to see that I run past this ad, and then the elevator going up to Black Hand is blocked off. So you do need to kill this ad. I think just fires from the walls come out, which, again, don't do that much damage. Not that hard of an ad. So you see, there you see, it was blocked off. So I'm going to go kill this ad real quick. And then you're going to take the elevator and you're going to go up to Black Hand. Black Hand is um, a fond fight for me because I remember it was the first time I ever completed a raid within the first week that it ever came out. This was the first raid. I did it on normal. Remember, I had to go to work in like an hour when I finished it. Or I think I had to raid in like an hour. I forget. But I was like one of the first people in the world to, to do this fight. I, was one of the, I think I was the first Black Hand guide on YouTube. I think it's up to like 60k views. Like it got pretty popular, even though half the information in there is wrong because I didn't, I just rushed it. It was a pretty bad video. When you get up here, what you're going to do is you're going to obviously pull Black Hand. He's going to spawn like bombs on the ground that you want to avoid. They, they, I think they have like a two and a half, three second timer until they explode. You want to avoid them. I don't remember. I think he used to spawn swirlies as well. But uh, after, at a certain point, I think 80%, 90%, something like that, he'll run in the middle. And then he'll go to the next phase. This phase, if you kill them quick enough, you're going to just immediately get out of. But in this phase, there's swirlies you want to look out for. I think vehicles also spawned, I forget. In this last phase, he does like a big smash if you don't kill him quick enough and he'll knock you back. So if you do take a lot while to kill him, make sure your back is to like a faraway place. So anyway, that was the video. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Good luck and have a great day. Bye.